we have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. It is 6.30, and there's nobody here for general information. Well, that's nice. Um, let's see. We'll pay a few bills. I agree. <laughs> is that our pay per viewer? Uh, let's see. Channel 192. And a motion to pay our quarterly pay for the planning board? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Okay, and then we have the advertising notice that is in the Gazette today and next week for the special permit for the um, Philip Myers for the Spice Company re redo. How much is that? That is $207.32. Do you need a motion? Yes, please. Hey, that, I have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now, let me ask you this, Bill, because I don't quite really put it. You get a confirmation from them? Because didn't you have a problem with the paper once that they didn't? No, I gotta look you gotta just look on the gazette to see that it's paid. Mm. Um, what did I do with it? Oh, they put the date in incorrectly. Yeah, they didn't put it, they didn't pull it the second time. I gotta go find what I did with it. This thing. We can't check online. We they actually we used to send what's called a tear sheet. They would send you your own copy. They, of they haven't done that. The ad ran, and now the uh, they they jacked the rates up quite a bit. Increased their profit margin by skipping a little bit. Yeah, like the uh, this is for the spice company. Every just for everybody's information and for the um, people in the audience. Every time I have a public hearing, I have been requested to send out a notice to various town boards to see if there's any back. Taxes due, back water payments, sewer taxes, fees, or otherwise. So I send it out to various boards, and they typically reply back to me, um, nothing is owed or something is owed. On this particular one, you might be able to explain this, it looks like, I can always ask the treasurer otherwise, this is from uh, Tax collector. the collector. Looks like they owed... $142.44. They paid $66.86. And they still owe money? Is that what the way I'm reading this? It would appear to be, yes. Balance $142. Right, you know, here they pay. They paid this. But they still owe $142.44. Okay. And that, okay. That would be the existing. Is that that's, the that's the current that's owner. That's, that's the current. That's the current company. owner. So that I will give her a call and tell her that um, it has to be paid. Otherwise, no decision will be made mm -hmm. until it's paid in full. And if she has it a problem with it, I said, you know, I, you know, go talk to the collector. I said because I'm just the messenger here. This is the notice I was given. Do we know if these people are purchasing the building or just relocating their business? These people Philip that Myers. He when I sent the notice out, I sent it out because I it was unclear who I should be who should be referred to. Mm -hmm. So I sent it out referencing the owner of the present building, um, the Spice Company, and Philip Myers were all sent out to the three to the various town boards, and this one came back. So I tried to cover all the bases because I wasn't sure. Well, if he's indeed buying it, that's the kind of thing that would be cleared up. As, yeah, he, uh, he's buying the property. If he's buying the property, then something like that will be cleared up at uh, closing. But um, no reason why we can't encourage it to be done sooner. Yeah. 
candy while you were out of the room because I was going to eat candy to try and mask the pesto dinner I just had for poor Mike. Yeah, I was going to say it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So you to get a clump of uh, <laughs> On the affordable trust, this was, uh, since we have nothing we can talk about the general stuff, we have no public hearing scheduled. Nobody's here for general information. On the affordable hearing trust, thank you for the. Uh, You're welcome. From from Waitley. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I called Bill, them. They're very helpful. Yeah. Bill Bill translated it from a PDF to a Word document. I'm going to go through the Word document and change it to be pertain to Hadley. As if we we'll get you know get the yeah. get get pertain to Hadley. <laughs> and I'll send it out to everybody for a review. The town clerk was going to try to locate the actual document. Because the trust had a few additional things in it, not many, but as you said, perhaps a few. And I haven't heard that far, but that's, okay. that's essentially the, the nuts and bolts. And uh, so, you know, it's going to be a we got to tweak it a little bit for us, um, but it's a it's a very. I think what it says will protect the town and still give the trust yeah. the leeway that's needed so that we can have a trust. Because they're limiting how much money can be spent without town meeting or selectman's approval. That's perfect. There's no problem with that. We're not trying to free. We're not, we don't want the trust by any means to free wheel. Um, but you just want the leeway to do the basic stuff. And if a good project comes up, you know we can jump on it. Or the and trust, can, the trust can jump on it. And as Bill said, it helps us leverage it. With, did you say CPA money, Bill? It, yes. It can. Yeah. yeah it doesn't have to, but. but in other words, the CPA money can stay where it is the way I read it. But if a good project comes up that CPA money can be used on, then this affordable trust can utilize the appropriate monies, including CPA, to do the project. Right now, there is no entity set up that can tap into right. that portion, the dedicated affordable housing portion of the CPA. Mm -hmm is just sitting there untouched because there's no town entity that can tap into it. Mm. This, this would allow that and would allow somebody to utilize the, uh, the trust money that's building up. And there's no annual reporting requirements as long as you're not doing anything. Just there's, there's, no no annual, there's, no, there's no annual reporting requirements as long as you don't utilize CPA right. money. If you're just you're just building your fund as an annual audit, well that's pretty simple. You've got a fund, you get an interest. Yeah. Yep. The and town, it's redeposited. The town does a full audit every year, anyway. Yeah, this is a. This would be a very. I'm. I'm, a, I'm assuming it's a very simple audit because you've only got one yeah. fund and one interest source. Although this, this, the affordable trust could invest money, in something other than, whatever they invested in now. But I don't know if you want to go through that aggravation. Hmm. Well, I think ultimately that will be. <clears throat> I don't think the board, of. The affordable housing trust is going to be responsible for holding the money or investing the money. I think it will go through the treasurer's right. office. I, let, well, yeah, we're not. We, we don't want the trust to get into that deep of a financial stuff. Just let them. Let the the town do as they appropriately do, and then this fund could this trust group could just. So they would not have to ask for town meeting approval. Let's say they hired a house next to somebody's, then they wanted to. Rehab it for affordable housing. Uh, there, there, I don't know. I don't think I brought the trust the trust wording with me. But the way the wording is basically right now is the trust fund could. This is the way the Whateley set up. We could set up ours a little bit differently. But they can spend up to five thousand dollars without any selectman or town meeting approval. Okay, out of the fund, mm -hmm. they can hire. Um, Consultants, they can do this, they can do that, provided the, <coughs> the money's within five under five thousand. If it's over five thousand, up to I forgot how much 
it need board of selectmen approval. If you go to town meeting, town meeting can override all that and, and spend a whole bunch. You can't borrow or, t or, or make the town liable for anything without board of selectmen approval. Um, if you're spending money out of the fund and only the fund, I believe this trust fund group and the board of selectmen can expend money out of the trust fund provided you don't exceed the money in the trust fund. Well, that's a lot of power for that. I'm, I'm not sure of that, John. I'm, I'm just kind of trying to guess the well, word they're going to have. It's going to have. They're going to have the powers as to what are yeah. enunciated by the trust yeah. document. The, 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 the reason restrict them or not restrict them. The, re, the reason for that to have the to have the fund and a board of selectmen approval to utilize money in the fund. Let's say a property becomes available. Exactly. And it's you know say 150 thousand. Just picking a number out of the air. The money is well in the trust fund, but to have the people that want to sell wait for town meeting approval, they're not going to wait. I'm going to buy it for 150 grand. If you come up with 150 grand, you can have it, but I'm not going to wait three, five months, six months for town for a town meeting to, to to approve the money. Okay, you're not expending more money than you have available. Well, APR goes through that though. So, among other things, the uh, the statutory create, uh, provision for the trust requires that it, a the board be appointed by the selectmen, select board, and that a member of the select board be on the board. Right. So it's not going to be just off on a tangent or okay. maybe yeah. up its yeah. own. Yeah. This is rules. this. There, there, there are, there, there's very specific rules on who's on the committee. And how it's expended, and you can you can the, the town setting up the fund can put more provisions into it, like Quaintly has. Like the way the fund is set up by the state, they can spend all kinds of money. Quaintly set it up that they've limited without selectmen's approval or town meeting approval. You can't borrow without town meeting approval, but you can expend what's in the fund with the group and board of selectmen approval. It says, uh, Whaley says that the town treasurer would be the custodian of the trust fund. Did we find out anything more? I think you said that the, uh, there was some talk about onerous reporting, and I thought, Mike, you said that they, they hadn't had any of that yet? No, there's, all, they, all you need is a yearly audit. Right. And I asked her, have, is there significant reporting, are there significant reporting requirements? And she said, I hope not. Because if there are, they haven't been. Yeah. <laughs> so it seems from what we were told earlier that the only reporting requirements, the second level of reporting requirements only kicks in if you're accessing, if you're tapping CPA money. And then you, in addition to having an annual audit, which we do anyway, every account gets audited, um, we would have to file, the board would have to file a separate report with the CPA powers that they, but uh, if it's just, as Mike said, if we're just sitting on the money, uh, there's no, that uh, reporting requirement does not apply. I got a client that's one of the trustees. I can call them up and ask them about it. But no. They're supposed to have five trustees and I know they've only got four, so they're not. No, the next, the next step, there has to be verification and monitoring of the fact that this is an affordable unit, a housing unit. That was where the... Not necessarily. It depends on what we're doing um, yeah. or what the... Well, like, we like, want it to count right, to right, an and, 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 and that is, that can all be, that is where the town, or not the town, that is where this group hiring a consultant comes yep. in. This group doesn't make all the 100%, they don't take all the onus on, we, we decide this, we decide this, to verify that it meets requirements. You can hire a consultant to help you through the process. Uh, and we have, nobody's even talking about actually buying an affordable unit at this oh, yeah. point. Yeah. So yeah. Um, some of it could go towards, sub, um, I don't know, I don't even know what it could go for, but the point is that there is <clears throat> there's a need to have some entity that can access the funds that are sitting right now in the Bacon Wilson 
yeah. IOTA account. Right. Mm -hmm. No one's getting any use out of them. So. So is it? Yeah. Am I correct in thinking? I'm going to oversimplify with an analogy, but the account that you just mentioned is it? Would it be fair to say we, we basically have a vat with an end pipe? And there's no spigot, and by creating the trust fund, we'd have a spigot that we could. Oh, even simpler than that, we don't have a bat. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's an accounting for it somewhere, right? There's that was some yes. money here and some money there. There, oh, there, okay. there is a there's an entry, there, book entry someplace. Yeah. There are two things. There's a there's a valve that is closed at the moment uh, at the Bacon Wilson Client Trust Funds account where Barry Roberts is depositing a portion of each unit sale. Um, but to, in order to get the valve open, we have to bring our own bucket. Okay. We don't have a bucket yet. <laughs> this, this would create everything, the bucket and open the spigot. Well, a so a third us, party has a bat, we don't have a bat. We don't even have a bat. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, and, and, so first thing we do is we bring our, we, we, Build our bucket, bring it, and yeah. fill it. Yeah. And then we can talk about what we're going to do with it. Yeah, you know, we can ladle out of it. Got it. That's that, that's it. And thing. as a trust fund, this will be uh, yes, separately invested. So uh, to the extent that we can say that in the next year we do not anticipate any need to tap into it, then the funds can be put in longer term and higher interest investments. This is that they meet four times a year. I don't know if that's a problem. We want it in our document. Yeah. Well, it's going on. Maybe should have to meet. And then you read well, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a matter of let's assume this board gets appointed to the uh, committee um, and one member of the board of selectmen. Notify the member of the board of selectmen that on this meeting we're going to have a quick review of the fund. Mm -hmm. If they don't show up, the board of selectmen doesn't show up. We still have a quorum. We yeah. have still have a quorum. Yeah. We can do the discussion, document that we discussed it, mm -hmm. and we, we fulfill the requirements. So we could be that committee. We could. The select board could appoint us as the initial trustees of the Affordable Housing Trust. With one other member of the Board of Selectmen. And Jim could be the chair, because we have to select a chair. Thank you, you, Mr. Walker. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Sarsen. Well, you have a vote of confidence. <laughs> if it's as simple as we say, that's not I think, it's, I think it's pretty simple. I'd like a, Sounds like yeah. somebody with a good financial background <clears throat> would be an excellent candidate for... So next week, uh, th I, this afternoon, I got in an updated mm -hmm. version of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission report on affordable housing situation in Hadley. I did not get a chance to send it out to everyone. Uh, there is going to be a meeting, and I'm not sure at the time, but I believe it's going to be on Wednesday the 11th to go over that latest draft. Okay. Um, which is mainly just providing a, uh, it's not a, even a roadmap so much as just a, uh, a, a status report on where we stand and what the strengths and weaknesses are. So I will circulate that to you all tomorrow. Okay. And I also had, I remember I said I was going to send you some of the various things that we had accumulated the last over the last few years. So I have, um, I'll get those along to you as well. Okay. The uh, I did get an update from Patty at Patty Gam Gambini Gambling Gambling Patty at yeah. PVPC. Patty G. Um, yeah, <laughs> and she ha almost has the regulations ready um, for us for. Mm -hmm. Uh, adopting as part of the uh, what was that? Oh, the uh, uh, watershed bylaw that we just recently passed, and uh, we'll figure it'd be. I think we we're originally going to schedule that for early January. Like get the calendars out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was we we're going to have uh, PVPC back in at that first meeting. Right. Back on track, but right. Okay. 
speaking of PBPC, Bill, there's an annual meeting coming up with the Hadley Farms meeting. Were you planning uh, to go to yeah, that? Yes, that's not the annual, that's a quarterly meeting. Oh, it's quarterly, okay. Yeah, so uh, that is next Thursday, I believe, yeah. the 12th. Um, and then I'll have the new executive director at it. Yes, I think I'll try to go, but you're you certainly um, not precluded. You're not from precluded. Joining so, um, I did speak with Tom Quinlan uh, yesterday. He um, stopped by to pick up that release of Covenant for, okay. for a lot, and I gave him a a little more detail on, on exactly what it is that we're looking for. That basically he has to prepare a deed of the roadway and of the easements to back up the town meeting vote. Okay. And um, I suggested that he, he really should have an attorney to help him with that. Uh, Randy could produce the meets and bounds description, but it needs. Uh, you know, it's not something that can, they can do themselves, I don't think. So, okay. Um, Getting back to the insurance trust, the insurance trust, the housing trust, the affordable housing trust, is it our intention to bring a, have, a, have an article on the warrant to approve it at Springtown meeting? That's my hope, okay. yes. So I think if I, once they get this thing straightened out for Hadley, it shouldn't be a big deal for us to look at it and say, oh, change this, change no, this, no, massage sure. this a little bit. Yeah, sure. It's not going to be, you know, whole scale changes because it looks pretty good from the way they put it together. And documents are always amendable, too. You can yeah. Them if you have to. Yeah. So. There was an email that David Nixon forwarded regarding that. the marijuana dispensary that's going to be opening up. Uh, collective. THC. This, what, what was the concern there that the there was some yeah. fire department, uh, board of health, and building inspector were not happy? They didn't get notification. Yeah, we're not happy either. Because they didn't uh, need some check. Was it check or third? Planning board's not happy too. Okay. So we had this. We had the uh, development coordinating committee meeting this afternoon, <clears throat> and the reason David Nixon convened it is that the town received a letter from the Cannabis Control Commission saying that um, uh, the current proprietors, whatever they name they're going by uh, for heirloom or Happy Valley or whatever, uh, are ready for their, um, uh, ready to receive their adult use marijuana license from the State Cannabis Control Commission and the commission it polled or asked the town if they were in good standing. And first, they have filed nothing with us. Correct. Um, and second, if they are going to, they're going to have to make interior changes to accommodate uh, adult use and medical, medical use in the same building. Separate, correct. Yeah, they have to have separate counters or separate spaces. So uh, that triggers um, building inspector and um, Board of Health and Fire Chief. Board of Health. And then there's a uh, question that we had at the outset when we first approved it, the traffic impact of medical was key to, uh, they asked us to excuse them from doing a traffic study on the basis that they anticipated their use would be akin to a pharmacy with a drive-up window. And that, that there's a listing for that in the traffic Bible about how many trips per hour such a space, such a structure, such a use generates. And we were saying that that's fine for medical, but we had concerns about adult use. Uh, at the time, there wasn't even a cross, uh, there wasn't even a sidewalk on that side. I think there is now. There is. Uh, but there are no convenient pedestrian crossings. The 
signalized pedestrian crossings are at University Drive and at Campus Plaza right. Drive. And it's going to just be too tempting for someone to try to split the difference and hop across the, uh, the median barrier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be tough. So uh, I might need to put up a bigger fence there. But uh, so uh, that was what the, the concern was. And uh, uh, David Nixon replied to the proprietor. Uh, the applicant to say that uh, you're not ready, and that's what we're telling the Cannabis Control Commission. Yeah, the Kazik, which is named Al Attorney Albano, was here. We took all the information, and I thought he was going to apply, and they never came back. Now, there was some question to this mark that the uh, medical marijuana dispensary was going to be located to a proposed mosque, which was within. 300 feet of, of the site because they had not applied for a building permit. The mosque. The mosque, the mosque didn't apply for a building permit. Uh, that was kind of swept aside. Now, that it is a mosque. Yeah, but, but, but a religious entity, I don't believe, um, stops the application. It's the, the Sunday school. Sunday school that they or the the or the or the, or the, or the yeah, the religious the religious education. school that they yeah. have, but the apparently the statute on adult use keys that to uh, a K pre pre K through uh, high school school, yeah. not a um, that that is not a full time school, so I don't think it would pertain to it. It's a one day a week basic thing. Mm -hmm. They're they're leaning more towards the you know probably four to five day a week school. And the mosque said they have no problem with the yeah, uh, adult was, use, or not the, with the with the uh, uh, medical. I think they just I think they don't want to create any waves to either. They want to just be, you know, leave us alone and we're all set. Of course, I can't blame them. So uh, I did uh, what you received was a copy of David Nixon's email to the proprietor, mm -hmm. copy to the planning board, and that guy has already replied, saying that yes, they, they are, they want to, uh, to have Al Attorney Albano work on their behalf. Okay. So something should be coming in, um, <coughs> apparently not tonight. What else? I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Let's adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, John. Wow.